My name is Jide Okeke and I'm the coordinator of the United Nations Development Program uh, Regional Program for Africa based in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. I'm here today at the United uh, States Institute for Peace uh, to share uh, some findings uh, that uh, emerged from uh, a recent report uh, commissioned by UNDP on soldiers and citizens, um, the need for democratic renewal in Africa. Let me share three important findings that emerged from this report. Uh, the first is qu it's quite reassuring. Um, we continue to see that democracy is quite popular on the African continent. And I, I think democracy offers us the opportunity to choose our leaders. That's the only political system that offers us the opportunity. However, it appears uh, from the evidence we have from citizens that there is a mismatch between democratic processes and democratic outcomes. Uh, and, and this is very much revealed in the responses of citizens uh, in our report. The second finding, which is very important to emphasize, is that uh, we see that where there is a protracted evidence of military governance over time, uh, there is a likelihood of coup risk. What do I mean by this? Uh, in some of the countries, if you just do a simple uh, summation of the years of independence uh, of countries that have recently experienced coups in Africa, uh, especially Niger, Burkina Faso, Mali, uh, and, and to, to some extent Guinea. They have a total years of independence of over 310 years. Out of that, um, they have experienced in total uh, years of military rule of over 200 years. So we begin to see that there is a political culture in some of these countries that makes coup and military rule uh, a likely alternative when there is this widespread evidence or perception that there is an abuse of democracy. The third point, uh, which I think is important to note, is uh, what I call a security paradox. And this is very much revealed in our report. We see that the areas where we have seen coups emerge on the African continent, with the exception, of course, of Gabon and uh, Sudan to some extent, are a con regions where we have seen protracted uh, insecurity over the last at least one decade. And despite uh, the prolonged insecurity, we've also seen investment through military interventions in these countries. So we are seeing that military, extensive military or security investment, hard security investment, is not translating in the improvement of uh, the security environment on the uh, in those regions. Therefore, I think it's time for us to begin to reset how we think about improving security in this region. Where there is protracted insecurity, where you find that there is protracted corruption, there is protracted level of uh, under economic performance, uh, you also find that there are risk in varying forms which makes uh, different sort of vulnerabilities likely, and that could be in the form of coups. So this is not to say that um, there is a causal relationship between underdevelopment and coup risk. But where you see protracted uh, level of economic underperformance, it leads to different forms of vulnerabilities. And depending on the specificity of that country, you could see uh, the likelihood of coups. I think for the last 20 years, um, the African Union regional economic communities have spent a lot of political capital in trying to ensure the adoption of the African Charter on e Elections, Democracy and Governance uh, on the African Constitutive Act, the African Governance Architecture, the African Peace and Security Architecture. Uh, but I, I think it's time for us to go beyond norm setting 
and begin to think about implementation. And this is why within the African co context, we've partnered with the African Union Commission uh, to establish what we've referred to as the Africa Facility to Support Inclusive Transitions, uh, where we are working with the AU and other regional partners uh, to support transition processes, mechanisms, and uh, uh, institutions in ways that can help uh, to restore constitutional order in some of these countries. And I, and I think this is really important. It's a first step. It's a way of thinking innovatively and, 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 and constructively about how we support transition context without necessarily just simply imposing sanctions on these countries. Let's not forget, we need to promote governance, uh, but at the same time, we also need to safeguard development in some of these countries where coups have occurred. Thank you.